All right, we are off to pick up the Airstream. We're heading down south. It is 19 degrees. You can see the Battle Monument and the snow on Mount Anthony, but we're heading south. And when we come back up north, the Airstream will be behind us. Okay, welcome to this week's episode of Love Summit. And this week we are... Headed south again for our early spring trip. I think this time we're gonna be picking up the Airstream and actually bringing it back. Yes. So uh, no more heading down south. Yeah, it was fun though going back and forth a little bit. It, it was, and I think we've gotten really good at it. We've, we know the route. We, we know, know the, yeah, we know the hotel that we stay at for one night. And we're gonna show you that as we start this video and bring you along as we get the Airstream up and going again mm -hmm. and get it ready for kind of heading down south. We huh? have a few uh, little maintenance things to do on it as well when we get there. Yes, and we've been prepping on that as we've been home. So yes, we did a couple of little projects and we ordered a little thing and we'll see if it works. We'll give you some tips and tricks for if ever you need to do something like this. Uh -huh. We packed our stuff. Yep. And, um, it should be uh, pretty looking forward to getting things going because, you know, the winter thing was fun. Right. But like this is like, okay, we're picking it up. We're going to a rally in Provincetown, Massachusetts at the end of this. And then I think we have another rally in April, right? It's going to be in April, and de maybe in April, and definitely in May. Yes. And then after that, we head right from that rally West. to the International out in Wyoming. Yep, we're going to take a side route maybe to North Carolina for a certain festival, correct? Yes, uh, we'll be hitting a festival. We will be hitting Washington, D.C. Yep. So we've got a lot of fun things. Yeah, we got a lot of fun things planned for this spring and into summer. But it all starts here, so join yes. us on this episode. Yep. We've stayed at a Fairfield Inn in Harrisburg, Harrisonburg, Virginia. That's about a halfway mark, right? Yes, it is for us. And the thing about staying at a hotel, you know, even though we don't have the Airstream with us, we get asked often if I'm taking my Airstream or my RV from the Northeast, like in November, December or March time frame, and it's not winterized, what are my options for being able to stay in it? And we always say, hey, we, a couple times Cindy and I have stayed at hotels with the Airstream. And oftentimes these hotels off the interstate have ample room for you to pull your rig in and go ahead and just keep it there. We've done that at least, I think, three times, would you say? Yep. And there's a big truck that's parked in the parking lot here, so that would be at least as big as a... Yeah, it's an 18-wheeler and it's parked and they're made for that. So what we do is we Google Earth it beforehand. Make we sure. make sure that there's good ingress and egress. And the other thing we do is always make sure that there's a restaurant nearby because you're going to be hooked up. You're not going to detach. Right. So you're going to be able to want to be able to walk to the ho uh, restaurant for dinner that night. Sounds like And we fun. like the Fairfields because they have free breakfast in the morning. And we get a discount. Yes. So, good. good so point. I'm currently editing, finished editing, City did most of the editing, the, uh, our stove review, we're doing some final tweaks, and we're here for the night. So we'll kind of show you around here. Okay. It's going to be 22 degrees this evening, so yep. we had to take some precautions. We brought in the plants, and we have a lot of stuff. A lot of the, all the liquids, basically, that could potentially freeze. And the thing is, you know, we brought everything, all of our RV content. So... Yeah, this is this is the the contents of our fridge down in the airstream, or well, will be anyway. I don't think these little mini fridges are meant for <laughs> that much stuff. But people will also say when I'll comment, "Hey, just stay in a hotel." People are like, "No, no, no, you don't need to do that. Just bring bottled water, and you can use your airstream and sleep in your airstream or whatever." And yep, that's that's true. But there's no way if all of a sudden in the middle of the night you need to do a number two. I'm going in a bucket, and I know Cindy's not going in a bucket. So yeah, that's, this is a much better option than trying to stay in a winterized airstream, in our opinion. So it is day two on our journey south, and we are, looks like we're on I-77, yep. just above the North Carolina border. Yep, we're almost in North Carolina. So how are you keeping yourself busy on this trip down? I'm looking over a rally spreadsheet for a rally that's coming up in May. Yes, we are co-hosting a newbie rally up in New Hampshire so all the people who have bought their new rigs over the course of the winter or whatever yep, that are and, new. and want to learn a little bit more about how to do things on their rig and park yep. and stuff like that that's what we're going to be doing and so we're going through cities looking at the menu the food amounts right the costs. just matching them up 
up to some of the rallies that we've done and just seeing how things will look. But yeah, we're heading south. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it was a chilly 29. Ooh, there's a North Carolina border. Yep, there it is. Mm -hmm. It was a chilly 29 when we got up this morning. We brought in all our liquids and yep. plants and stuff like that. And we had a full refrigerator with all the stuff that we're bringing down yep, to our airstream refrigerator. Yep. And uh, yeah, so I think it'll be a little bit warmer tonight so we can probably leave those we're stuff say, in. say 52 right now. So yeah. uh, it's still a little bit chilly, but. Should not freeze the liquids this time. All right, let's keep heading south. Yep. We have arrived in Georgia. And the first step in before we go pick up the sub is? Cleaning the love truck. Yeah, we need to get some of this Vermont road salt off. Yep. It's a tough thing when you're down in Georgia, everyone's cars look all shiny because they don't get road salt and we look like our car is. And people are very fond of their car washes here. So I think this will be an interesting one, right? Yes, so let's go ahead and check out this car wash, get the love truck clean, mm -hmm. and then head on down to pick up the sub. Yep. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, we got the lights going. Let's go, oh, look at the water. I love it, I love it. It's like disco water. Look at that. Look at the color of the water, that means it's gonna be super clean. Just regular water will get it this clean. I don't know, I just think there's great satisfaction in getting your car washed with super clean blue, green, red water. What do you think? Absolutely. And the heated drying process was like going through a hairdryer. Yeah, we liked it. All right, let's go right. pick up the sub. Let's go. Yeah, we traveled all the way from Vermont to Georgia without any backups or stop ups. We have 19 miles to go to get to our campground in the Airstream, and we are dead stop. But again, it goes back to the point I've mentioned this a million times CB radio is an important piece of kit, I think. Portable, you don't have to have a thing. But aside from the entertainment, they do tell you when, what lane. So they'll talk to you about the lanes and stuff, which you might not get from Waze. So there you have it, life on the highway. But hey, we love a good road trip. Yep. This is a part of it. Yep, absolutely. Accident on the left shoulder, three lanes, the two right lanes are closed, so that's why it's a disaster. So what lane did they say that we're gonna be supposed to be in? So we need to be in the hammer lane. Okay. And of course, being well-versed in CB radio language, um, growing up watching Smokey and the Bandit, we're in the hammer lane. What's the, and the hammer lane is? No, far left lane, because that's where you put the hammer down. Right. Yep. yep. So we are in the hammer lane. We're east, we're southbound and down. Rolling out and trucking. But we're not moving very fast. But we're not moving very fast. Five miles an hour. So we've gotten back to our RV. We've done a walk around through the outside. Everything looks perfect. Um, the folks at our RV park, the storage lot are so nice. They even, you know, deducted any storage fees for the last week. I mean, I didn't expect that, but they're awesome. So before we get up and going, the we, saga of, of the our... the free freezer and the refrigerator continue. Right. So you may recall we've got this temporary fix, which seems to be working pretty good for the door. Yep. It doesn't look great, but it works. For now. But also, if you look here, our freezer door has 
the spring is no longer functioning. So. Well, and, and that's not a big issue, except it's annoying. But when you close the refrigerator door, the freezer door doesn't stay all the way shut. Right. And so when that happens, you start losing a, little cooling, effect. a cooling effect in the freezer. So this is something important that needs to be fixed. And we believe it's a broken spring housing on the right. Yeah. And while we were back at the house, I ordered another one just in case yep. that was the case. And we've got the replacement piece. And so now we're going to attempt to get the spring housing out and put that back in. And according to the video that we watched, this should take about two minutes. Yeah, the entire video is two minutes and 40 seconds for this guy to do. This is gonna take us a lot longer and there'll be a lot more bad words. So yes. what we'll probably do is just shut the camera off. If you wanna see how to do this, we'll link the video in the description below and we'll see if it gets uh, fixed. And the, the time to do this is now because obviously the fridge is off. If we waited till we fill the fridge, then we'd have to take everything out and put it in a cooler. So right. we're going to go ahead and do this now. And we're going to see how it goes. We'll let you know. All right. So that didn't take quite as long as the last time. The last time took three, four hours. This took 15 minutes. So it just goes to show when you know what you're doing, you know how something works. So yeah. Hey. So uh, I was the one who said that the right spring housing had broken. You were correct. And we didn't need to replace the fridge door. Also correct. So we're well, the fridge door still needs to be replaced, but... When it breaks, which since we have the replacement part, won't be anytime soon. We've been carrying this around for what, four years? No, about two, but... Uh, I'd say three. Let's compromise on three. All right. But yeah, it was the spring housing. And the funny thing is they come in left and right uh specific yep and they cost about forty dollars each that part right there it's broken right there you can see but it costs about forty dollars piece of plastic this is about having been in manufacturing that's about three cents worth of uh injection molded plastic and it's a reproductive and cancer harm part so you'd think that if it was causing cancer and reproductive problems they'd give you a discount on the price but well there were some other versions on sort of amazon that weren't made by Dometic, but I wasn't sure what their quality was and their specifications. So, you know, if you don't want to take a chance, I think going with the Dometic proper part is the way to go. All right. So task let's, one complete. Let's start bringing her to life. As I'm taking my tire cover, my UV tire covers off, you know, somebody on the internet commented and called me the tire whisperer because we've had such good luck with our tires, never having a deflation or blowout in 21 years. But you know, it's all about doing the right things. And I'm looking around at the other trailers at the lot here and motorhomes, and there are very, very few who are being stored over the winter with these UV protectants on their tires. And you know what? It's just part of the little things that keep the tires going, that keep you from blowouts, keep you safe. There's no whispering, it's science. Keep that UV off your tires during winter storage. And I don't know if you can see it, but this guy's clearly storing his trailer tire extremely deflated, which is gonna put some unfortunate forces on the sidewall during storage again that's why i say you should always even if you want to reduce the inflation when you travel when you store your rig the tire should be inflated to full pressures on the sidewall even if you want to reduce it while traveling that ain't good so typically i have a load plan in the back of my log here that shows where the stuff goes um, when we're traveling. But obviously this is a non-normal circumstance because we're having to put everything that normally goes in the RV as well as our travel stuff into the back of the truck. So some of the stuff that we have found to be absolutely great are the yellow bean boat totes, they call them, those big canvas bags where we can load kitchen stuff into, um, kind of set of top stuff. But really one of the big game changers are those Eagle Creek duffel bags that when we're done with, they have their own little carrying case. We roll them up. And they shrink down. And they shrink down to almost nothing. In fact, we always carry, here's a little tip. We always carry when we're traveling long distances, we always carry one of those duffel bags with us in the rig, just in the off chance it should, you know, a family member have an emergency that we need to get home to, where we need to fly home like that day or something like that. We have like some that. kind of luggage. We have some luggage that we could put onto an airplane or say one of us was to go, say both of us didn't need to be there. One of us had to go. Um, we have that luggage that we could put onto an airplane and go. So we always keep those with us, but this time we have two of them. That's where all of our bedding goes. Things are a little helter skelter, not as organized as they normally are in the load plan. Well, and when we transfer to our campsite, 
there's going to be some stuff that's going to ride in the airstream because there's no room for them in the truck. So yeah. it's just a matter of figuring out how to move things. All right, we've got the battery installed. We've got the cables on the propane tanks unlocked, the hitch chains unlocked. Let's go ahead and hitch her up, tow her to our campsite, dewinterizer, and continue fixing things in beautiful places. Correct. So we have dewinterized. We're at our campsite. Everything is working, so that makes us really happy. But we're having to continue to work on fixing things in beautiful places. And while we were gone this past month, our mirror in the bathroom had departed basically after 21 years. You can see the original hinge, how it just kind of broke. It just and kind of loose. broke. We've been, I drilled these new holes. We were just Brapping. kind of cobbing it together. And the mirror actually started delaminating and coming apart, the silver part from the glass. So I called, when we were at Jackson Center last, I had the part number, everything. It's always a good idea to have your parts catalog downloaded to your computer. So I was able to give them the part number, everything at Jackson Center. And they said that the last one they had sold was in 2016. That was the last part that was in their inventory. Yep, and, and they, they don't no make more. them anymore. And so I called an Airstream dealer, and it was an Airstream of Vermont, not Airstream of Lebanon, and not Colonial Airstream, another one. Yep. And asked for the mirror, and they quoted me for this mirror $940. And so, obviously, <laughs> we weren't going to pay that. They're not paying $940. So, we went to our local glass company in Bennington. They cut this for $41. Using, a using our previous mirror. Yeah, we as showed a them template. the old crappy mirror and said, Can you make this? And I'm like, Can you make it for less than $940? And he made it for $41. Mm hmm. We attached the backing from the previous mirror and put a new hinge on it. And instead of five uh, holes or one, let's see, one, two, th four holes, I've put in nine. So hopefully this will make it last longer. So Cindy, we're going to go ahead and get a template for the holes on the other side because the holes are not going to match up. And we'll have to drill some holes into this and I'll put on our new mirror as we continue to fix things in beautiful places. All right, we're on the final screw. We'll see if this worked. After Airstream, we won't say which one offered us a mirror for nine hundred and forty dollars. This one probably cost us what, hundred, hundred and fifty to make. About that. All in, tools, hardware. We had to do customized stainless steel from a boat company. So all in, it cost us about one hundred and fifty. And we did all the labor ourselves. It works. There you have it. Wow. Fixing things in beautiful places. That is fantastic. That looks sharp. There you go. We'll get a forward view. And there's our new mirror. And finally, Sim, what's the last thing we're doing today yeah, for fix? Knife, my knife block kind of fell loose, but it's all fixed now. Last thing to fix in beautiful places. All right. Good job, C. What does this call for? This calls for maybe an adult beverage. Yeah, you know it. Yeah. And we're super happy that the Airstream came out of storage perfectly. Everything is running. No, and, no, no problems. And our projects, the freezer door and the medicine cabinet worked out so far perfectly, right? Exactly. So we're ready to head out here. We are trying something tomorrow called flamping. So if you don't know what flamping is, tune in next week because we'll show you what it is. So that's why you need to hit those notifications yep. and all that other stuff. Yep. So if you like this video, give us a big thumbs up. And if you think we're in a subscription, like to subscribe. And comment below if you've had a fixer up experience, right? Some of the things you're planning on doing for this spring to get your rig ready to go. Because we come out with RSV and Airstream related videos just like this one every Tuesday. Thanks for watching.